Welcome back. In this lecture, I will show how to perform multiple linear regression using R. In simple linear regression, I have only one independent variable and the linear model that we use is of the form y equal to a plus b x. Whereas, in case of a multiple linear regression, I have a linear model where I have only one dependent variable or response variable, but I have more than one independent variable or independent predictors. So, the formulation of this uh, multiple linear regression uh, will have uh, a equation of the form y equal to a which is intercept plus b 1 into x 1 plus b 2 into x 2 plus b 3 into x 3 and so on. Here x 1, x 2, x 3 are my in 3 independent variable or 3 predictors. So, in this particular example that I will uh, use for this lecture uh, is a data where we have measured uh, the length of fish as the fish are growing in a tank at different days at different interval after hatching and we have performed experiments with different water temperature. So, we believe the growth of the fish has a relationship linear relationship uh, with two variable two predictor one is the age obviously with age uh, the size of the fish will increase and also the temperature of the water has an effect on the growth of the fish. So, we will create a linear model here with two variables two independent variables the age of the fish and the temperature of the tank water whereas, the dependent or the response variable will be the length of the fish. I will perform this using R studio. So, as I said the linear model I want to create is of this form length equal to b 1 into age and plus b 2 into temperature. So, b 1 and b 2 are the two unknown coefficients that I have to estimate from the data age and temperature are two independent variables or predictor, length is the dependent variable and note I do not have any intercept here. So, I will start with reading the data, I already have the data in a CSV file format. So, I will use the read.csv, the name of the file is fish.csv. So, I will read that data and I will store that data in a vari variable uh, fish. So, check that data. Uh, so, it is a three column data and uh, it has uh, around 44 data point observations. The first column, the first variable as the header says is age, age of the fish, it is in days and I have the temperature as the second variable of the second column, it is in uh, centigrade, this is the temperature of the uh, water of the tank and length is the last variable which is the uh, dependent variable or the response variable. So, I want to perform uh, linear regression, multiple linear regression for this data and I will use the same LM function that I have used to create a simple linear regression model. The, that is the advantage of using LM uh, uh, function, it is a linear model function, it is not specific for just simple linear regression, it can actually handle more than one independent variable. So, how should I specify to LM that okay, I have more than one uh, independent variable? Okay, this is how I do that. So, I am calling LM function and as an argument, the first argument is I am defining the model. So, I am writing length tilde age plus temperature plus 0. So, by defining this way, I am telling the uh, LM function that see length is my dependent variable age is one of the independent variable or the predictor, temperature is another independent variable or predictor and I do not have any intercept in my model. I am asking you to set the intercept as equal to 0. And what is the data for this model? The data is my fish data. So, data equal to fish, the fish variable where I have stored all the data after reading the CSV file and all the regression result will be assigned to a variable reg reg. I have performed the regression, now let us use the summary function to check the uh, summary of that uh, regression result 
as we know by calling the summary, I can look into the value of the coefficient, estimated values of the coefficient. I can check the t test data, ANOVA data and as well as the R squared data. All these things which I require to understand how good is my model. Uh, so, let me check the summary. So, I will call the summary uh, function and reg the variable which is storing all the regression data right now will be used as an argument. Let me expand that console, fine. Remember in this model, I have specified that there is no intercept. I have set intercept equal to 0. So, uh, LM has not calculated intercept. It has calculated only two coefficient, one coefficient for age, the other coefficient for temperature. For age, the estimated value of the coefficient is 27.28, whereas for temperature, it is 29.074. So, my model is the length of the fish is equal to 27.28 into its age plus 29 into its the temperature of the water. Now, it has also performed the t-test as usual and you can see the p-values for this t both the uh, coefficient are very small. So, that means I can reject the null hypothesis and that in other word it means that both these coefficient are statistically significant. It has also calculated the R squared, both the multiple R squared as well as the adjusted R squared. This is a multiple linear regression. I have more than one independent variable and as we know, as I keep on increasing the number of uh, independent variable or predictors in the model, you know, the always uh, the, the normal R squared value will actually not uh, be a right reflection of the goodness of it. I have to use the adjusted R square. And so, uh, in this case, I will consider the adjusted R square, which is 0.96. Still, it is quite good, close to 1. That means, my linear model for this data is very good, uh, very good. Now, if you remember, when we were di discussing the uh, multiple linear reg regression in another video, we have to discuss about the ANOVA or F test. When you have multiple independent variable, you perform an ANOVA while with the regression with a particular null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that all the coefficients for the uh, independent variable, right? All the coefficients for the independent variables are equal to 0. Whereas, your alternate hypothesis is at least one of those coefficient is not equal to 0. So, LM function has already performed the ANOVA, the F test for this particular data set for this linear model and it has calculated the p value and it is saying the p value is less than 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 16. That means, it is a very small p value. That means, I can reject the null hypothesis. That means, I can say, okay, the null hypothesis that all the coefficients for the independent variables are equal to 0 is rejected. That means, uh, at least one of the coefficient must be not equal to 0 and I have already got the coefficient value and individual t-test has also said that uh, these coefficients are statistically significant. That means, my model will should retain both the coefficient, both the dependent independent variable age as well as the temperature of the water. So, uh, I have performed the regression, I have checked the uh, statistics of that also, right. Now, I want to calculate the confidence interval for each of these coefficient, right. So, let me calculate the confidence interval. I will use the conf int uh, function again and the reg which is storing the all the data for my regression should be my uh, argument. And if I calculate, I can say at the 95 percent level of uh, inter con 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 confidence, confidence interval, the value, estimated value of the coefficient for age should vary from 22.69 to 31.86. The estimated value is 27.28, so it should lie in between these two. The true value should lie in between 22 to 31, whereas the tr uh, true value in the population level uh, for the coefficient of temperature should lie between 13.7 to 44.44. Uh, that is all for performing a simple multiple linear regression. Right. Uh, uh, what I have done, I have just used the LM function and specified the model. I have specified which is dependent variable, which are the independent variable. And in this particular model, as we are considering, there is no intercept, right? Because the growth of the fish cannot be uh, independent without uh, age, right? If a fish has a zero, it cannot have a size. Uh, so uh, that's why we have said the intercept equal to zero. 
uh, and then perform the linear multiple linear regression. In this lecture, I have another example where I have more than two uh, independent variable and we have to perform multiple linear regression. Let us check that. So, I will start by reading the data and then I will check what we have in the data and then I will perform the multiple linear regression using the LM function again. So, the name of this uh, data file is multi.csv, it is in my current working directory. So, I call the read.csv function to read that data and assign that data to a variable called multi. Uh, let me check the data. So, you can see I have four variable m, p, r and s and I have uh, 45 observation, 45 data points, 45 rows and what I will do, I will consider S as the dependent variable or response variable and M, P and R as the independent variable and I will perform multiple linear regression. So, to do that, uh, I will use the LM function. Now, in this case, uh, we will consider intercept and also I will play trick the way I call LM. See, when I am using this uh, LM function uh, to perform multiple linear regression, uh, if I have two dependent variable, it is very easy to write them, right? Uh, I can spell out. For example, the previous example I said age plus temp. But if I have suppose 10, 20 uh, independent variable, then you have to type all those, right? That does not make sense. So, there is a shortcut to do that and that is what I am showing here. Uh, I am calling the LM function and the first argument is this S tilde and dot. What do I am telling here? I am telling to LM function that I am specifying that see S is my dependent variable and after tilde I have not written anything but dot. By dot I am saying consider all the variable present other variable present in this data set. Consider all the other variable present in the data set and the intercept also as on, on the uh, right hand side. So, by putting that dot I am assigning all of those. I have not to spell them out separately. That is a, a easy shortcut. And then I am specifying the data, data equal to multi and I want to store the, or assign all these data of regression to a variable called reg dot multi. I perform that and now I will check the summary of my regression using the summary function. Okay. So, the first column here are the values, estimated value of the coefficient. The intercept is uh, 0.37. Uh, the m is my, uh, the coefficient for m is minus 1.34 the uh, p e coefficient for p is 1.7 and the coefficient for r is 1.2 and if you see the t test data all of them has low t uh, p value so that means all of them at certain level of significance are statistically significant that means each of these uh, independent variable has effect on the uh, response variable that s and also it has calculated the adjusted R square that is quite decent 0 0.59 in 0 0.6 and the p value for ANOVA is also very small. That means, I can reject the null hypothesis for ANOVA that all these coefficients are equal to 0. No, they are not equal to 0 and the TTS has already said uh, individually they are statistically significant. Now, if you remember the lecture of our multiple linear regression, in that lecture we have discussed a very important point. That is the problem of multicollinearity. You may ha have that in your data set that some of the independent variables may have relationship among themselves, right? So, maybe one of the independent variable may be represented as a linear combination of one or more other independent variables, right? That can happen, right? So, uh, we have discussed at length about this multicollinearity problem in this lecture. If you do not remember, please go back and check that. And when you are performing a multiple linear regression, you are supposed to check whether you are facing this multicollinearity problem or not. There are many ways to do that and in that lecture we have discussed about it. One way to do that, uh, to check the multicollinearity problem, whether you have that problem uh, in your data set or not, is to use the VIF right variance inflation factor. So, uh, I have discussed the definition of variance infla inflation factor in that lecture. What I will do here, I will show how in R I can calculate the VIF for this particular data set and check whether I have multicollinearity problem in this data set or not. Uh, to do that, 
I require a particular package. Uh, that package is called car package. It has lots of useful tool. Uh, I have already installed that. You can easily install that uh, in RStudio by going to its tool and then clicking install package and writing here as car and then select and then you install. I have already installed, so I will not install it right now. What I have to do, I have already installed, so I have to call that package and load it in my uh, this working space here. So, I will use the library function library car to load that library. I have loaded it. Now, this car has a, a function called VIF, shorthand for variance inflation factor and I will call that function and I will use this data of my regression reg dot multi as an argument. So, it has calculated the uh, variance inflation factor for each of these independent variable m, p and r. If you remember, if, if the variance inflation factor of any of these variable is greater than 10, then we have trouble of multicollinearity in our data set. Right? But in this case, all of them are close to 1 or 2. So, that means my data set does not have multicollinearity problem. Collinearity problem. Uh, so, I am happy I have not to uh, get rid of any of this independent variable and my multiple linear regression model that I have created just now is good enough. So, what we have learned in this lecture? We have learned that I can use the LM function uh, to perform multiple linear regression just like we have done simple linear regression. Only thing when I am specifying the model, I have to specify who are the independent variable. And I have also shown you a shortcut when uh, to write that model in the LM function when you have large number of independent variable where you can simply skip all the writing all those variables explicitly and just put a dot to make LM understand that you want to consider all the uh, independent variable and the intercept in your model. And also uh, discussed about the statistics that you get from the summary of this regression and we have also discussed about the how you can calculate the variance inflation factor. That is all for this video. Thank you for learning with me today.